we got our little Rolls Royce and they're working at the car wash. And while they're working at the car wash, I've been working on mortgages. Y'all want to know what I found out? All right. We, we didn't find out about the car wash, but we did find out about this. I told you I was right. Hold on. I've been explaining to you how mortgages work. So while finding a new home is exciting, navigating the mortgage process can be overwhelming for some. Knowing what steps you need to take can help the process go more smoothly. Now, once you have accepted an offer, here is what you will need to know to make sure the mortgage application stays on track. Submit your application. Now that you've found the home that you want to buy and the lender to work with, the mortgage process begins. At this stage, your lender will have you fill out a full application and make you supply documentation related to your income, debt, and assets. Okay, that's fine. Order a home inspection. Schedule a home inspection as soon as you can. Now, doing so will give you adequate time before your closing date to negotiate with the seller if the inspection reveals unforeseen issues. Who knows about unforeseen issues? We're going to skip that part because we don't care about unforeseen issues. What we care about is this. Be responsive to your lender. Why we got to be responsive to your lender? Well, if you applied or qualified, if you applied or qualified for a mortgage, you'll receive conditional approval. Conditional approval. Why is it conditional? Well, at this stage, your lender may require different additional documentation. No, so make sure you respond promptly to keep your application moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Stand up! It's what the old Jays are singing in my background, but I don't want to hear a stand up, y'all. I want to hear LTD holding on. Holding on. It's no lie. Holding on. LTD, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, purchase homeowner's insurance. Your lender will require proof of insurance before the loan can receive final approval. Now, why do you need to have mortgage insurance? Ladies and gentlemen, all conventional home loans must have mortgage insurance. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's been so much confusion over the years because nobody's been paying attention. But it's right here. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. This is we, We're going to stop at number five, but I want to show you what website this is. This is Bank of America. Okay, sorry. They are one of those financial institutions that knows what's required. Hold on. It's very hard to do when... Hey, it won't let me. Oh, there it is. Bob said it won't let me make it any larger. All right, we're gonna go here, right here. Now let the process play out. Now why we gotta let it play out? Know what's happening behind the scenes. Your lender will order a home appraisal to ensure that the value of your home that you're buying is in line with the purchase price. The appraiser will visit the home and compare it to the other recently sold homes in the neighborhood that are of the similar price. Your lender will also order a title search to make sure that there are no outstanding liens on the property because they don't want to pay those. They want to be first in line. Now, avoid taking on new debt. You don't want to get any new credit cards or apply for new loans or anything like that. Make any major financial changes because that would affect your debt to income. That would affect your debt to income. That will affect your collateral. No, excuse me. Collateral? Yeah, because right now you haven't heard anything about collateral, have you? There's no such thing. I'm sorry. This is the mortgage process, ladies and gentlemen. There's no collateral mentioned ever. Hold on. It will affect your debt to income ratio. And it could get in the way of your mortgage approval. Uh-oh. Mortgage approval? Woo-wee. Because I'm not buying a mortgage. I'm getting a home loan. No, you're not. You're creating a mortgage. Go back and look at what's going on here. Now, locking your rate. Now, if you haven't already done so, you want to lock in your interest rate with the lender. Why? Because when you do so, they can't make it go up and down. They can't say, oh, we're going, oh, no, no, you didn't do it in time. So you want to lock in your interest rate ASAP. Okay. All right. On approved credit. All right. APR. You know what APR? APR, y'all. APR. Anyway, review your documents. Once your loan is approved and your inspection takes place and the appraisal and the title search are complete, your lender will set up a closing date and you will know exactly how much money you will need to bring at your closing. Technically, when they set up the closing date, they already give you all that information. That's what you're waiting on. So they give you that information, they set up the closing date, you go down there. Now it says, hey, you need to get a cashier's check or arrange to transfer the money by wire payment and include the closing costs. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay, I'm looking for collateral. Hold on. Closing your home. At the closing, 
Be sure to read all of the documents you receive and ask any question you may have about the terms of the agreement. Then after you sign everything, you're going to lock the door and celebrate your new home. After you sign everything, after you sign everything, after you sign everything, you can unlock the door and celebrate your home. So did they tell you anything about how they pay the seller on your behalf through escrow? So let me ask you a question. Where did you find anything about putting down collateral? Well, of course, people are going to have to put down collateral, but we're talking about this thing talked about being approved for a loan. It says, once you've been approved, you've been approved. Okay, now let me show you that this is the customary measures throughout the United States for a mortgage. Let's show you. You don't, you don't mind? Okay, now we're going to go down to what are the steps in the loan approval process. We're going to go down to that in a second, but I wanted you guys to do a see this right here. Sorry, we got to go back up. Now, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, this is New Birth, and I ain't heard no Honey Bee before, but it's just not the song I want to hear right now. Okay, so, it's been such a long time. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I, I, y'all, it's been such a long time. I ain't heard this song in a long time. How long has it been? Oh, I don't know. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, you know. All right, New Birth, everybody. What it's been such a long time. Says estimate your bud 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 budget. Then get pre-approved. You've been pre-approved. Then shop for the home and make an offer in that home. Then order an inspection. Get a go rate shopping and choose a lender because you know they can interest rates. Then it says complete the full mortgage application. Have a home appraisal done. Mortgage processing and underwriting. Ladies and gentlemen, all this is done before you sign the papers. Okay, let's go here. The mortgage report.com. Such a long time. And I love you. I guess I always will. But you know, in my silent nights, in my silent eyes, I long. Look. Mortgage pre-approval. You see what I'm saying? Without collateral, ladies and gentlemen, the mortgage loan process seems daunting, especially if you're a first-time home buyer. Luckily, you don't have to go it alone. Your real estate agent and your mortgage loan officer will be there to guide you. Really? Let's find out. Closing day. Let's find out what happens on closing day. I would rather, let's do mortgage, let's do the mortgage and everything, appraisal and processing and all. Let's do that first. Once your full loan application has been submitted, the mortgage processing stage begins for you, the buyer. This is mostly a waiting period. But if you're curious, here's what happens behind the scenes. First, the loan processor prepares your file for underwriting. At this time, all necessary credit reports are ordered as well as a title search and tax transcripts. The information on the application such as bank deposits and payment history are verified. Respond to ASAP, ASAP to any request during this period during to make sure underwriting goes smoothly because they will cancel the underwriting and you have to start all over again. Any credit issues such as late payments, collections, and or judgments require a written explanation. Once the processor has put together a complete package with all verification and documentations, the file is sent to the underwriter. During this time, the underwriter will review your information in detail. It is their job to nitpick the information you have provided, including missing items and red flags. They'll primarily focus on three C's of mortgage underwriting. Capacity. Do you have the cash to pay it off your loan? Credit. Does your credit history show that you pay debts on time? Collateral. Is the value of the property you're buying sufficient collateral for the loan? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is the property I'm buying sufficient to co collateral for the loan? Wait, wait, wait. How can I buy the loan and put the home up as collateral? I don't own a home yet, so you can't. How can you ask if the property I'm buying is sufficient collateral? For, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, no, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, S-E-C-U-R-E-D, 
L O A N. Let's find out what is a secured loan. Somebody help me because I promise you I'm having a difficult time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really am having a difficult time. So, and it's, they're telling me to hold on and hang on, but it's been too long, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't just want to do secure loan. I'm sorry. I forgot to do the the the, the major question, and that that's why we stuck. Okay. So we do W H A T. It's been so long. Ooh Give me the love. Uh oh, a circle loan is backed by is a loan backed by collateral. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a secured loan is a loan backed by collateral. Okay, hold on. Let's do this again. Ladies and gentlemen, is the value of the property you're buying, excuse me, I don't own it. Oh, I'm, I'm buying it. Sufficient collateral for the loan. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. How can I put up the home that I don't own as collateral for the loan? Okay, we're going to skip that for now, right? Because we, we've been talking about that lately, right? I told you that's where they made their mistake. That's where they got too greedy because they should have known somebody like me was going to come along. They knew I existed at that time. Won't you? Okay, you've made it. The big day closing. The lender will send the closing documents along with instructions on how to prepare them to the closing attorney and title company. The closing attorney and title company. The closing attorney and title company. Prepare yourself for a big stack of papers you'll be signing. Wait a minute. One of the more important documents is the closing disclosure. This is where they have to tell you everything. It should look similar to a loan estimate you received when you originally completed the full loan application. The loan estimate gives you the expected cost. Closing disclosures confirm these, those costs in fact the two should match completely. Laws prevent them from differing too much. If everything is in order, you'll sign all the documents, receive your keys, and just like that, you're the homeowner. Wait, wait. Once I sign the documents, I get the keys? Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? So when does the, when does the seller get paid? When does the seller get paid? Okay. Watch this. Okay. What I put in there is in the mortgage process, when does the seller get paid? In many states, you can't get paid on your closing date. Hold on. Watch this. Oh, it says, I want, I want you to check. Everybody. Every day at the same cafe. 630. And nobody knows. Nobody knows she'll be there, y'all. And they be holding hands. Making all kinds of plans. Okay, when does the seller get paid after closing? The closing process can drag on, but every homeowner has to go through it to make sure, well, I don't want that. I want to know what happens. Whether you obtain a whole loan through a traditional bank or a lien, so it can be removed. No, I, I don't need that part right there. If you are buying or selling a home, you must understand the process of closing. Okay, let, let's do what, let's do this right here. Let's see if we can understand this process because ladies and gentlemen, the only process I know is the one I just showed you because that's what I've experienced. That's what I've been told is the process. So uh, we're, we're talking about escrow. Okay, so let's do this. Buying a home can be, oh, come on now. Okay, buying a home can be a complicated process. One that most people are generally unprepared for and don't really understand. Within the stages of buying and selling a home, from the offer to the home inspection to getting a mortgage approved are other actions that must happen. Okay, what are those? One of those hard to understand elements is the process of being an escrow, which occurs 
between the time the seller accepts the offer and the buyer gets the keys for the new home. How do you prepare for it? Here are 10 steps to walk you through the process. So you won't be left standing in the rain without a roof over your head. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, God. The escrow process occurs between the time the seller accepts the offer to purchase and the buyer takes possession of the home. Acceptance and offer. Offer and acceptance. Do you understand? You're not buying it from the bank. You're buying it from the seller. The first part of the escrow process is opening an account in which a deposit is made and any other payments can be held. The buyer must wait for bank approval, secure financing, and get inspections completed. Purchase hazard insurance, do walkthroughs, and go through closing. The buyer may walk away from the agreement if conditions are not met or if there's a problem with the property. Aww. Open an escrow account. We don't care about opening an escrow account. We'll take care of the escrow later. Okay. An escrow account is managed by an outside party known as a trustee in order to hold valuables such as monies, property deeds, personal finance documents on behalf of the two agreeing parties until the specified conditions are met during the financial transaction depending on the reason for the escrow. The escrow agent may be a title company that specializes in real estate and or a bank or other financial institution or a private individual entrusted with the role, a trustee. Whew. Anyway, we don't care about, well, let's do this because it talks about closing. The escrow company acts as a neutral party, a trustee, to collect the required funds and documents involving the closing process, including the initial earnest money check. Earnest money. Why is it earnest? Because he played with Bert. You didn't know? The two gay men on um, Sesame Street? Ernie and Bert? Yeah, that was earnest. Anyway, the loan documents and the signed deed. The loan documents and the signed deed. Hold on. In some areas, attorneys may handle this process instead of an escrow company, in which case it is often called settlement rather than escrow. Okay, we can talk it over, y'all. Now, let's find out about the lender and the appraisal. We're waiting for a lender's appraisal. The bank, the, the bank and the other lender providing your mortgage will do their own appraisal of the property, which you, the buyer, usually pay for to protect its financial interests in case it ever needs to foreclose on the property. Now, pay attention. If they ever need to foreclose on a property, you haven't even purchased a property yet. Okay, so let's make sure we understand in case they need to foreclose on a property, which you haven't even purchased. If the appraisal comes in lower than the offered price, the lender will not give you financing unless you are willing to come up with the cash for the difference. Wait a minute. Why? Wait, they won't give me financing, but I don't even have the home yet. Okay, let's go on. Uh, or the seller lowers the price of the appraisal amount. Okay, let's continue. I, I just want you guys to understand something because they're going to give you a hard time about this. Remember, this is their practice. So we have to let you know how their practice is flawed, how it violates law, how it violates due process, how it violates your rights, how it proves that it is not a secured loan. Just want to make sure. Secured loan is only when you provide collateral. You can't provide collateral for something you don't own. That is a fact. That is not, we showed you the case earlier today. Your other options are to try to change the appraiser's mind by any one of the following. So I don't want to change the appraiser's mind, okay? If none of these options are possible, you may be able to cancel the purchase contract. Okay, securing finances. Well, hold on. You should have already been pre-approved for a mortgage at the time you, your purchase agreement is accepted. Yay, I'm approved! Okay, once you give your lender the property address, it prepares a good faith estimate and a statement detailing your loan amount, interest rates, closing costs, and other costs associated with the purchase. Now, it says you may want to negotiate with the numbers on the document before you sign it. Okay, don't worry about that. Now, once you have your written loan commitment, it's time to remove the financing contingencies in writing from the purchase agreement. Wait, wait, wait. Financing contingencies? Okay, let's find out about this if one exists. The agent also includes a home sell contingencies and purchase contracts to prevent buyers from simultaneously owning two homes or paying two mortgages. This type of contingency gives the buyer a specified amount of time in which to sell their current home before closing escrow on a new home. Okay, hold on. Where are you going? We, we didn't ask you to go all the way down there. Look, you see it's over here playing with me, y'all. Hold on. Let me see if we can go back up. Huh. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Something wrong, y'all. No? Huh. I think we just. No, I am. We were at contingencies. Okay, let's go back to the escrow process. Okay. I don't know how we ended up getting all the way over there. All right, we got to go all the way back down. And let's see if we, okay, other options to try to change the appraiser's mind. That's where we were. None of these options work. Securing financing. Okay. Now, once you give your lender the property address, they'll prepare a loan, closing cost, and appraiser, you may want to go before you sign it. And then we were here. Once you have your written commitment, I've been committed, y'all. It's time to remove the finance contingencies, if they exist. The agent will often include a home contingency to prevent you from owning two homes. Okay, we covered that. Approve uh, the seller's disclosures. During this step, you should receive written notification of any obvious problems that may have already been identified by the seller and the seller's agent. For example, the garage may be, may have been turned into a living area, violating the city housing code. That happens quite often, ladies and gentlemen. You may already be aware of any problems like these because they're often mentioned in a listing obtain a home inspection we don't care about the home inspection let's get to the meat notably you cannot negotiate any seller's concessions if any contract says you will purchase the property as is if the inspection process concludes satisfactory you will you will then need to remove the purchase agreement inspection contingency in writing You'll repeat this step after any other inspections, pest inspections. Go on now. Environmental inspections. Go on now. We don't need all of that. Other inspections. Like I said, we don't need all of that. All of that ain't got nothing to do with it. purchase hazard insurance. We don't need that either because you're the only hazard. Title report insurance. Oh, look at that. All these inspections and fees. The final walkthrough. Let's cover the final walkthrough because that's what we're talking about, right? Okay, it is a good idea to re-inspect the property just before closing to make sure no new damages has occurred and that the seller has left your uh, you items specified in the purchase agreement, such as appliances and fixtures. At this point of the process, you probably won't be able to back out unless the home has sustained some serious, some serious, some serious damages. However, it's not unheard of for a petty buyer to pressure his or her agent to get the agreement nullified over something insignificant. Ah, pettiness. Review of the HUD-1 form. Review of the HUD-1 form. Ladies and gentlemen, notice what this is. One day, at least one day before closing, you get a HUD-1 form. Or the final statement of the loan terms and closing costs. Let's go ahead. Compare it to the good faith estimate you signed earlier. The two documents should be very similar. Look for unnecessary unexpected expenses as well as outright mistakes close escrow closing the process varies somewhat by state but basically you'll need to sign a ton of paperwork which you should take your time with and read carefully the seller will have papers to sign as well after all the papers are signed the escrow officer will prepare the new deed naming you as the property owner and send it to the county recorder you'll submit a cashier's check for the arranged wire transfer to meet the remaining down payment, some of which is covered by the earnest money and the closing costs. And your lender will wire the loan funds to the escrow so that the seller, uh, so the seller and if applicable, the seller's lender can be paid. Interesting, huh? If you make it this far, you'll finally get to take possession of the home. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. They just got paid. Hold on. You guys see that wire transfer to meet the down payment and which the money? It says in your lender will wire the loan funds to the escrow, uh, to the seller, and if applicable, the seller's lender can get paid. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Pay attention. If you make it this far, you will finally get to take possession of the home. Excuse me. Then I can't put the home up as collateral because I haven't ever taken possession of it. So how can I put up as collateral something I didn't own when a secured loan requires the following? 
in order for me to get a loan, a secured loan requires that I back it with collateral. Well, during the whole process, I never owned the home. When I signed over the collateral, it wasn't mine to sign. The lender accepts collateral against the secured loan to incentivize the borrowers to repay the loan on time. This is their practice, ladies and gentlemen. The idea behind a secured loan is a basic one. The lender accepts collateral against the secured loan. The loan is for the home. You cannot use the home as collateral for the loan because you don't own the home. So even if you're pre-approved, it doesn't matter. If you're pre-approved, once you get the funding, it says the loan has funded. Now you can go and do closing. Well, once the loan has funded, you receive the loan, people. You're no longer pre-approved when the loan has funded. Well, not until you sign the closings, no, because funding is the loan. Once the loan has funded, you cannot force me to put up collateral for it because you've already approved the loan. Well, no, we don't approve it until you sign the papers. Yes, but I cannot sign away the collateral because I've never taken possession of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, you see it right here. You make it this far, you will finally get to take, finally get to take, finally, this is the last step. You get to take possession of the home. After everything is done, you now get to take possession of the home, which means they hold the home as hostage. Okay? I'm not saying this. They are saying this. This is Investopedia. Okay? It really is that simple. They're telling you how it all works. So let me tell you what I did. Because I got to let you guys know what I'm working on. Because I don't want you to think that I'm sitting up here doing. I want you to know what I'm working on, ladies and gentlemen. See this right here? This is the IRS website. This is the government agency. Now, the first thing I want to show you is this is what they're saying their financing institution is. The financial institution fraud is a class of criminal schemes targeted traditionally traditional retail banks, credit unions, and other federally insured financial institutions. See, this is only for the banks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not for you. Hold on. You want to make sure that this is not for you? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, what happened is this is what happened that brought you in. The FBI and other entities charged with investigating mortgage fraud, particularly in the wake of the housing market collapse, have broadened the definition to include frauds targeting distressed home buyers. The FBI did this, not the law, because the law already included homeowners. But this is what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. They're caring more about the financial institutions than you distress homeowners. So this is what we're doing with the document so that you'll know. I'm going to have to take a break from it. But this is the document thus far. Okay, we've added this section right here, which says, I believe that the, oh, we got to get rid of the being capitalized. I do that from time to time. That the statute defines a mortgage fraud in part as, let's put our comma, defines mortgage fraud in part as, knowingly making any deliberate misstatements, misrepresentations, and or omissions during the mortgage lending process with the intent that the misstated, misrepresented, or omission be relied upon by the mortgage lender, the borrower, or other party to the mortgage lending process. See, they didn't have borrower on their page. I added borrower. Why? Because I know the statute includes borrower. They focus only on the financial institutions. And if you look at their website, the IRS, you'll see that they have repeatedly gone after little small Joe over here. But And they get 20, 15, 30 years. But the financial defrauders get 10, 5, 11 years. Amazing, ain't it? They call it white collar crime. <laughs> Somebody's collar is dirty and they know it. Now, this is what it says here. Right after it tells you the mortgage lending process, and I believe that the parties listed herein, other than the claimant, 
are alleged to have committed such against my person and the American people, as well as the government. We're going to put as well as, okay? I put as well as the American government. And due to financial entanglements, the courts, in an effort to protect their Chris system, interest financial gains program, have given these and other conspirators a pass, and I object. Yep, they get to have a free pass, like the IRS does here on this site, by not mentioning any protection for the borrowers until here in this little, they have broadened the definition. Excuse me, broaden what definition? Well, the definition of what mortgage fraud is. You see, the Constitution, Congress, the law already defined what mortgage fraud was, but because they're an administrative agency, the FBI, they get to define what it means under their administrative policies. And so they did it prior to 2012. They did not have anything in this act for you. The homeowner. Look again, it says the FBI and other entities charged with investigating mortgage fraud, particularly in the wake of the housing market collapse, have broadened the definition. So prior to that, you weren't included. So during this housing market collapse, that's why they didn't do anything for you because they didn't have a policy for you. But now they do. So let me tell you the logic behind my reasoning so that you all can understand. We're going to go here. Because I have to show you. This is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. This is their mortgage complaint form. That's one. Hold on. So that you guys can understand what's going on. And I promise you this is ingenious. Somebody's going to agree with me when they read this and see this video. They're going to agree. I didn't do this for the other one, but I'm doing it for this one. Because remember, I told you they all have forms. They all have PDFs for you to fill out. So that's why we went to the PDF. But there is, uh, let's get to this one. Cause, because I've had it on and I've got the video overlay, it's not showing up and it's irritating. What I did is I went to several other sites that do mortgage fraud complaints. Remember the IRS said they have other agencies that do mortgage fraud complaints. I'm going to take each one of their mortgage fraud complaints, including this one right here, 2011. And I'm going to take their mortgage fraud complaints and what I'm going to do personally is I'm going to embed, see, mortgage fraud complaint form. They all have their PDFs. This is the Attorney General. Forgot which state. Oh, is this U.S. Attorney General? No, this is Vegas. All the Attorney Generals for each state have their own mortgage complaint form. Do you see this right here? Okay. Age. What, what does that matter? Because they do demographics, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We, we're not, we're not going to put no phone number on here. We don't want you calling. We want this, we want this information documented. Okay. Business or individual complaint. Do you see that? This is their complaint form. Okay. We're going to do the exact same thing, but we're not going to do that business individual because we don't need to. Okay. So we're going to incorporate what they're doing in their complaint in our complaint. Oh, we already have that one. Okay. Well, I think, let's see. Uh oh, we're stuck. So I can't really go any further because the computer said you ain't doing nothing. And so we're stuck and I am stuck. So let's give it a second for the computer to catch up. That's what happens when you do so much. Oh, that's right. Sorry, folks. Folks, what's happening is I have... My dragon naturally speaking running in the background and that program is going through a bunch of documents a ton of documents so i can't reach down to put you on pause because we're frozen and so it'll be a second like i said it'll be just one second because see i don't know if my voice is breaking up or not so that's why I'm just going to pause it.
There we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry about that. Like I said, doing too much and moving around too much and messing with too much is causing too much of a problem. All right, what we're doing is this complaint form. We're going to conform it. It's going to take me another couple of days. I will get the case law embedded in here. I will get the principles embedded in here. But just because they created an escrow process doesn't make it legal. And I don't believe anybody has actually challenged it effectively to this day. You cannot put something you don't own up as collateral for anything. You don't have the right. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody gave you permission to put their house up as collateral. You don't have the right to put the house up as collateral until you actually own it. They claim that's the whole purpose of this whole process is bringing you through closing. Well, no, that's not the purpose of closing. Closing is how, that's why they call it closing. Because they think that this solves the matter. Ladies and gentlemen, all houses, all conventional loans are what again? Anybody? Anybody? They're backed by the United States government. They're insured. Okay. All conventional home loans are insured by the United States government under what's known as the sorry, single family home loan program. Just that it's called the single family program. Okay, I forgot the entire name. Single family home loan uh, something program. And I, I know it, but it's just I'm too tired to remember it. So it's you all's fault. Okay, I blame you guys for that because I'm tired because of y'all. All right. Let's get this video done. Ladies and gentlemen, this was just a video to show you that I was right about the mortgage process. And all you have to do is be right about the logic. You cannot put your home up as collateral for anything if you don't own it. It's not your home. Your argument in court, I did not own the home at the time of the closing. When I signed these documents, these documents were the closing. So upon my affixing my signature, I did not own the home. I did not take possession of the home until they gave me the keys. They would not give me the keys until I signed the documents. They forced me to sign the documents. It was done under arrest. They said if I didn't sign the documents, I would not get my home. A home that had already been paid for. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll find that the other party gets paid days before you sign your documents. Do you not understand? Who's going to sell you a home and you don't pay them for it? And they just sign it away to you. The other, the seller's signature has to be affixed to the document before yours. The seller signs before you do. You cannot sign ahead of the seller because if you sign ahead of the seller, follow me, everybody. If you sign ahead of the seller, you still do not have the right to sign over the collateral because you don't own the home. The seller hasn't sold it to you yet. Ah, now you see. And if you receive the loan from the bank, and they're forcing you to sign those papers before they do anything? Again, a violation of your rights. You just need to understand that. The whole process is flawed, which is why I showed you that document from that one case in Texas where they tried to do the same thing with that particular corporation. Hold on one second. <laughs> 